Okay, so let's talk about maybe some things you should have in your car and why you should have them. Because some person may have the worst day of their life and get in a car crash in front of you and you don't want that to turn into the worst day of your life. So we're going to address some of those things that you should probably be carrying in your car all the time. So if you want to be prepared for situations like this, hit the like and subscribe button. Stay to the end of this video for all the information. Okay, so let's start off with the proper mindset. So some of you watching this video have the preparedness mindset, the self-reliance mindset. Some people don't. Some of you that do might have a spouse that or a partner or friends that say, well, that can never happen to me or that'll never happen around here. And in the reality of it is, is it can happen anywhere at any time. Spring, summer, fall, winter. I'm going to tell you a real quick story. When I lived in San Diego County, a woman who was having mental issues was being chased by the San Diego Police Department, the Sheriff's Department, a bunch of other agencies. She got on a main freeway that connected the, co the I-5 and the I-15, she was on the 78, and she stopped her car, had a gun, she was suicidal. Freeway traffic was stopped, and it was stopped in both directions because she had a weapon. The SWAT team came out. I don't remember the year. It was between like 1998 and 2000, but I can tell you this. Those folks in the, in the cars on the freeway were stuck there for over 12 hours. This was a warm... Southern California day, and guess what? The aftermath, everybody was really pissed off because they couldn't leave their cars, or they didn't leave their cars, and they didn't have water. I mean, there's a lot of simple things you can carry to make life a little bit easier for you, and that's what we're going to address right now. <clears throat> okay, so as I've said, some people have the preparedness mindset, some people don't, and if not you, then who? And we can just look at what happened last week in Virginia with the snowstorm, the I-95 corridor closed down up near Washington, D.C. Um, what's that fellow's name? Tim Kaine, one of the senators from Virginia, was stuck there for 27 hours in his car. Uh, there were other people that were stuck longer. A lot of people didn't have food. They didn't have water. They didn't have extra blankets. Luckily, there was some truck drivers that literally came to the aid of their fellow stuck travelers, opened up the back of their trucks, and they fed people. Um, I do want to say this. Don't go knocking on a trucker's door asking if you can have some food from them. You know, these over-the-road truckers carry some food. You know, they're set up pretty well, but that's their home. And... I wouldn't go knocking on a stranger's door unless I absolutely had to. So let's get in the mindset of self-reliance and carrying our own stuff. So I just wanted to put that out there. First of all, <clears throat> the three things that I want to cover is food, water, and blankets slash shelter. So let's talk about the water first. You should always have water in your car. No matter what the time of year, have some extra water in your car. It can come in handy, it can save your life, and it can save another person's life if there's an accident and you have a lot of water. Um, <clears throat> how much water should you carry? So you're not going to drink as much water in the wintertime as you do in the summertime. You still need as much water just for your metabolic rate to be doing what it does, but you know, try to carry one gallon of water per person that you're traveling with. So we carry three gallons of water in each car. It's pretty simple. There's three of us. There's me, my wife, and my son. So we're covered as far as water goes. And when we take our dog with us, we have a dedicated water bottle for him. We have a collapsible little water bowl. And we always have a bag of food for him also. So that's covered. And it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. You can get gallon jugs. Or you can get the 16 ounce water bottles and distribute it throughout your vehicle. And you're covered with water. Now, food. What do you do about food? This is like a no brainer. You can go buy some prepackaged granola bars. 
uh, protein bars, you know, these energy bars, the cliff bars, whatever you have, the Sun Valley bars, power bars. You can put those in a Ziploc bag and you're going to have some energy to get if you need it. Now, the other thing is, is if you're hungry and you can snack on something, that well, that's pretty motivational. It's pretty simple. You got something to eat if you're hungry. Uh, you can also make a granola mix, you know, and that's really simple. So, you know, in the winter time, you want to get the the nuts that are high in fat, like the um, what is it? Maybe the macadamia nuts are full of fat. Uh, cashews are full of fat. You add some M and M's in there for that quick, cheap sugar rush. Some uh, cranberries, maybe some raisins. You mix that up, put it in a Ziploc bag, throw it in the trunk of your car. So your food's pretty easy to cover. Now I'm going to say this. I'm going to be doing a video after this one that I'll post tomorrow on my get home bag. It's a lot more in depth of what I'm telling you. This is just the basic stuff maybe to get started and not overwhelm yourself. It's really not a hard thing to do. So you have your water, you have your food. Now let's talk about blankets. So you can carry extra blankets with you and it's not hard to do. They fold up flat and pretty easily or you can roll them up, tie them off and put them in the trunk of your car. With the blankets, I'm going to throw in one other, or I'm going to be throwing in two items, actually. I want to throw in, always throw a big, warm jacket in your car in the wintertime. Always. It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. If you're traveling around, get a thick jacket. If you're running down to the grocery store and it's 25 degrees out and you don't want to put on all your junk, have that extra jacket in the trunk of your car because if there's a big car wreck and traffic is stuck for a few hours and you say okay I'm gonna walk there's a Starbucks right over there I'm gonna walk over to the Starbucks until this mess ends and it's a half mile away you don't want to freeze yourself in a half mile you want to stay comfortable get a jacket now if it's your super nice jacket and you don't want to keep it in the trunk of your car maybe go to the Goodwill secondhand store Buy a spare jacket, keep it in your car in the winter time. Really simple to do. Um, so you have your blankets, you have a jacket. Now let's talk about another, a couple more items. And the other one's a tarp with duct tape. I got a whole roll of duct tape in my backpack. I don't keep a tarp in my backpack, but I keep it in my truck. So the reason for the tarp is, let's go to the winter time, if there's a big accident and these people crash up in front of you and you're slowing down and all of a sudden you get rear-ended. So that person up in front of you, they're having the worst day of their life. You don't want to have the worst day of your life because that person is. Now the person that hit you, they're having the worst day of their life. Now, you're going to, now you could possibly be stuck for... 12, 18, 24, 36 hours in the snow out in the element. So if you have a tarp and your windows are shattered, you can get a small tarp and cover the top of your vehicle and keep the elements out. And you can tape it down with duct tape. You can use duct tape for everything else, man. There's like 101 uses for duct tape. So those are some things you should carry. And one other item, and I just watched a video last night from... Uh, Fieldcraft Survival. It wasn't Fieldcraft Survival. It was another video. I can't say the name of it, but um, it was Kevin Estella from Fieldcraft Survival, and he brought up a really good point. And I keep two of these in my get home bag, and I'm going to buy some more for my vehicle. And those are the the hand warmers. You know, if you have hand warmers in there, and you don't have your jack, and you're getting really cold, you know, you can crack those open. They're small. They're thin. You can put them underneath your armpits. You can put them on your kidneys, keep your kidneys functioning, keep your body warm, go like this, and you'll be good to go. It's not really hard to do. So those are some of the real basic items you should always carry in your vehicle. Um, obviously, in the wintertime, you want to you know, you, you rotate your water. You can't be lazy, okay? You know, the preparedness mindset is, is 
constantly looking for better ways, new ways, learning as much as you can. But, you know, rotate your water out every few months and rotate out those granola bars. Or the, you know, the granola balls, bars will last for a year or two. But your trail mix that you make, rotate it out. Get a new bag, make a new bag, throw it in, in the trunk of your car and eat the other stuff. You don't have to throw it away. It's still good, but you want to keep it fresh. So <clears throat> these are some real simple items that you can do so you can rely on who? Yourself. And not an extor external group of first responders that may not have the ability because the roads are so jammed up. Or there's leadership in the government, which I call poor management, that <clears throat> may not even know what's going on. There's so many bad things happened. It was the perfect storm of, if it can go wrong, it will. And maybe that you should have that mindset also. You know, Murphy's Law. If it can go wrong, it will. So I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope it gets you thinking about things. Please hit the like and share button with your friends. This is really important things. The more people that know this, the better off you'll be. This is a community. This is our country. We need to be able to be self-reliant and help each other. And that's exactly what we're going to do. One last thing, man. I forgot. Duh. Okay. Make sure you have some space blankets, mylar blankets. You know, they, they, they're about that big. They're tiny. That's another thing. If you have a few of those and you're in your car and you're staying warm and you see a motorist that has, you know, a couple little kids in their car or an infant, that might be able to help those people. Again, community, helping each other, reaching out and doing the right thing. So... Again, I hope this was helpful. Hit the like and share button. Thanks for supporting my channel. Y'all have a great day.